Hello, my name is Rick Potter and I teach history at Mary Baldwin. And today I will be giving you a virtual tour of campus. And we're going to start at the ADP House, which is also the former home of Joseph Waddell. Waddell was a member of the Board of Trustees, and in 1863, he hired Mary Julia Baldwin to run Augusta Female Seminary. Now, Mary Baldwin was one of our first graduates, and in 1863, in the midst of the Civil War, schools all over the country were shutting down. Waddell learned that Mary Baldwin was getting ready to open her own school, and potentially, if she did, we would shut down. So he went to her and said, would you be willing to run the school? She said yes, and the rest is history. Now, here is the present Mary Baldwin campus. What we'll do is we'll start off here in the ADP house. We'll walk down through the old SMA campus and then down to the historic core of the school. Um, above the red line here, you see the old Stanton Military Academy campus. SMA opened in the 1870s and lasted until 1976. It was a military school. In 1976, it closed. And um, Mary Baldwin had a choice. Do we let it turn into a development or do we buy it? And we bought it and it doubled the size of our institution. Now, as you cross the street into the old SMA, you come to Dimming Hall. Now, Dimming is where our art and music programs are located. This is um, of the former gymnasium of SMA. And next to it is Cable Hall. Um, these are our V-Will cadets. V-Will was founded in the late 1990s. Um, when SMA closed, uh, as you can imagine, losing your school can be devastating. And for the graduates of SMA, for years they thought that their traditions, everything was lost. But when VWIL came into existence, um, they got their heritage back. Because as you can see, the VWIL cadets carry the SMA banner. And in fact, these, are, these cadets are known as the Howie Rifles. They're the drill team the women who throw rifles up in the air and catch them. Very scary. Um, they're called the Howie Rifles because of this individual behind them. That's Major Howie. He was a teacher at SMA, and when World War II started, he volunteered for the 29th Division, 116th Infantry. He was one of those men who stormed Omaha Beach on June 6, 1944. Now, internationally, he's known as the Major of St. Lo because his goal was to take the town of St. Lo. And he so inspired his soldiers that when he was killed trying to take the town, they took his body in and placed it in the church in the center of the city. And literally, there are people from Normandy, France, who come to the Mary Baldwin campus just to pay homage to this individual and the sacrifice that he made for their freedom. Now, moving up the hill, we come to what was the SMA mess hall. This is where a lot of activities happen on campus, including dances, also sometimes the um, ADP orientation takes place here. The interesting thing about the mess hall, in 1912, one of Stanton's most famous citizens, Woodrow Wilson, was elected president. His birthday is December 28th. And having been elected president in November, the citizens of Stanton invited him to come home for his birthday, and he did. And when you come to campus and you go into this building, you'll see a star in the floor that marks where the president had his birthday dinner. This is known as Cannon Hill. It's one of the prettiest spots on campus, and to be honest, one of the prettiest spots in Stanton. It's called Cannon Hill because when SMA was a functioning military school, they actually used to fire a cannon off every morning and every evening to announce reveille and retreat. As you can imagine, the residents were very pleased when Mary Baldwin took it over, and even happier when our VWO cadets decided not to reactivate the cannon. Now, what we're doing is we're going to move down to the cupola here, which is on top of Hunt, which is our dining hall. 
Now, as we cross from the SMA campus to the Mary Baldwin campus, one of the first buildings you come to is Rose Terrace. Mary Baldwin was a land speculator. She ran the school with Joseph Waddell's sister-in-law, Agnes McClung, for at least 25 years. And these two ladies would buy up property when it became available and then reconfigure it either for the school or sell it to raise money for the school. Rose Terrace was originally a sanatorium. It was for people who had TB. And the idea being that on the top of the hill, the views plus the air would help people recover. The sanatorium closed in the early 20th century. The school bought it. And this building has served as the president's house, also as the French house, and now serves as the offices for the Shakespeare program. Now, we are right here, and we're going to move down into the historic core of the Mary Baldwin campus. This is Winger Hall. Um, Winger is actually divided into two parts, the front section here and the back, which was built about 10 years later. The back section ha houses the Spencer Center for Civic Engagement. Um, Dr. Spencer came here in 1958 and basically doubled the size of campus. A tremendous amount of construction happened under his watch between 1958 and 1969. Up here on the upper floor of Wenger is the registrar's office. These people can solve your problems when you have an issue with a transcript or as you're preparing to graduate. Turning in the other direction, we see academic. Academic was built in the early 20th century. Originally, it also housed the library. Today, it is one of three buildings, Deming, Pierce being the other two, that house most of our on-campus classes. If you have a chance to come to campus to take a class, odds are it will probably be an academic. Also, there are a lot of faculty offices located here. Now, on the side of academic, we have the administrative building here and McClung here. It's a beautiful courtyard. Now, the interesting thing about McClung is in the core of it is a building that's known as Brick House. In the 1870s and 1880s, Mary Julia Baldwin and Agnes McClung lived here. And Mary Baldwin's old room is a dorm room today, which is supposedly haunted. See, Mary Baldwin was an orphan when she came here in 1842. And she suffered from facial paralysis all her life. As a result, there are no images of the person who we are most famous for. The haunting is supposedly she didn't like her picture taken and she didn't like mirrors. So mirrors tend to break in the room. This is the administrative building. This is the original building for Augusta Female Seminary, which was renamed in Mary Baldwin's honor in 1895. Now, when this building was originally built, it was just this core section here. But in the 1850s, this area was added for dorm space and this for living space for faculty. See, originally when the school was started, everyone was kind of an ADP student. No one lived on campus. They didn't know about germs, but they knew that when young people lived together, they tended to get sick. And so the idea is they would avoid that. This spot right here is famous because two American presidents have stood here to give speeches. The first was Woodrow Wilson for his birthday speech in 1912. And the second was President Eisenhower who came here in 1960. These two statues here are known as ham and jam. Um, they're called that because in the 1930s, the joke was that what you got for dinner on Sunday was ham and jam. These statues were put here by Mary Julia Baldwin. She loved her animals. 
Now, in the 1930s, some boys from a school about 35 miles south of here decided to steal the statues. They didn't succeed, and they were arrested, but the original statues were damaged. As a result, the replacements are set in concrete, and literally, they can survive a bomb blast. Now, moving back up and looking over, we see Grafton Library. We have an excellent library, and I hope you will have an opportunity to take advantage of it. Grafton is named in honor of Mrs. Grafton, who came here as an assistant to the registrar in 1938. But she also served as interim president of the school at least three times. In the 1960s, when this building was being built, the students circulated a secret petition demanding that the library be named after her or else. And in the 1960s, when the students said, or else, you generally did what they ask. Grafton is known as the Mary Baldwin of the 20th century. Now, on the far end of campus, we have Pierce Science Center. Pierce opened in the early 70s. Dr. Spencer was actually responsible for getting the federal government to donate a, not, a fair amount of money for its construction. And it speaks to Spencer's power because in the 1960s, America was focused on getting a man on the moon. And of course, in the 1960s, all of Mary Baldwin's students were female. So Dr. Spencer got the U.S. government to give money for female science education. Pretty impressive. So this is our campus today. You'll see Hunt Dining Hall. We have dorm space up here. We have dorms over here. That's academic, McClung, the administrative building, the library. This is our PEG building where our gifted students are and Pierce Science Center. We hope that you have an opportunity to come to campus and to experience campus. But if you don't have a chance to come before graduation, we hope that you do get to come to graduation because graduation is an important multi-day experience. Here is the VWIL commissioning ceremony. Our VWIL cadets, we have had over 250 serve overseas in semi-combat roles and we've only lost one student, which is an amazing record. These People do amazing things. And wherever you travel in the U.S., if they find out you're from Mary Baldwin and they're military, they know about VWIL. Our graduation ceremony is something that's about family. It's formal yet informal. You will line up here, then process down. The actual graduation ceremony happens in front of Grafton, and then at the end, the faculty processes up and parts so that you may travel back up and be greeted by them. And your family gets to sit on the hillside with a perfect seat to see you on your day.